I wanted to, um, I've been really just devouring the book of Genesis, you know, just really getting happy, getting blessed in that book. And there's so many keys for success found there. And um, so today I really wanted to just talk about some things that you can do to be successful for this year. You know, a lot of people want to be successful. You know, I hear a lot of people talk about success and wanting to be successful and stuff like that. But success doesn't just happen. It just don't happen just because you want it. You know, it doesn't just happen just because, you know, the, but the uh, ball dropped and you said, it's going to be a new year, this year's my year. You know, just because you said that don't mean that things are going to change. Necessarily, right? Things will begin to change when you begin to change some things that you're doing or that you've been doing, you know. And I've been talking about one of the greatest principles that we find in the book of Genesis is, is, the, is sowing and reaping. <laughs> you know, and the bottom line is, if you're, if you're not sowing the right seeds for a prosperous and successful 2021, I don't care how much you want it, you will not be reaping that harvest. So again, I always say this, you know, but I think it's important for people to understand that, that um, you know, it's not about just love. Because if it was all about love and that's it, you know, God's love for us, then everybody in the world would be successful <laughs> because he loves everybody. There's nobody, he don't love nobody any different. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's not, so it's not about love, you know. And I always make this comparison, you know, he loves, you know, you just like he loves me. He loves the person on death row that killed 100 people just as much as he loves you and just as much he loves me. So it's not about love. It's about you practicing principles. And see, God has instituted many principles in the scriptures. And if we would dare look at it and begin to apply those scriptures and apply those principles, then we would begin to reap the results that those principles offer us. Again, we talked about sowing reaping. If you sow the right seeds, you're going to reap the right harvest. You cannot sit, take a handful of apple seeds and say, I want a rose garden. <laughs> that don't happen, you know. I don't, I'm going to believe God for a rose garden. You got a handful of apple seeds. <laughs> okay, how much you believe God for roses to come up. If you sow apples, you got, that's what you're going to reap. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sow of that and only that shall he also reap. So anyway, let me just give you a couple of things because I want to give you seven keys that I believe God gave me to really setting yourself up for a very prosperous and successful 2021. And if you begin to apply these principles now, by, this time, by the time this year ends, you'll find yourself in a different place than you are right now. Now, will you completely be done with it? Of course not. You know, will you, will you completely make it there? Maybe not. But I'll tell you this much, you'll be closer than you were. See, because success is not just about arrival. See, people think once they arrived, I'm successful. See, success is about the journey. It's about taking steps forward. It's about making progress every day of your life. And see, so you have to set yourself up to make progress every day. You can't just, you got to have a plan every day you wake up. You can't just wake up and be like, all right, we're going to see what happens today. <laughs> and then think you're going to be successful. <laughs> you plan for success. You set yourself up for it by things that you do. And those things that you do are the seeds that you're sowing for a successful life. You, you know, I'll tell you this. Life is a collection of days. That's all it is. It's a collection of days. So if you have good days, right, then ultimately you have a good life. So you have to learn what you need to do to set yourself up for having more good days than you have bad days. <laughs> All right, so let me just, let me just get into it. Because you guys are already looking at me like I'm strange. So turn your Bibles to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. And then I'm going to, you know, because I want to dive into Genesis. But I want to I wanna lay the foundation with this. I love you, man. It's good to see you. <laughs> Missed you, man. Ain't seen you in forever, man. You got to hit me up, man. Get my number. Call me, man. 
Amen, amen. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. I'm reading the Amplified Version. Now, I love this. Now, it says there, now listen. Now, you see, you want to be successful. How many of you say you want to be successful? Two of you? Okay. <laughs> I want to be successful. Okay, well, this is, you want to know what the Bible has to say? Do you know, can I, can you, do you, this is the only place that the word success is used in the Bible. Can you believe that? The only place. And now let's see what God says about if you want to be successful. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Right? So the, in other words, the word of God should not stop coming out of your mouth. Number one, if you want to be successful, you got to begin to speak it into existence. You cannot be talking trash and think that you're going to be successful. You cannot be saying that, I don't think I'll ever make it. You know, I, I'm a loser. I'm nobody. You know, you can't be saying stuff like that and then think you're going to have a successful life. Every time I make a little progress, I get knocked back four steps. You can't be talking like that, you know, and think that you're going to be successful in life. It begins with what you say. It don't end there, but that's where it begins. See, it first has to come out of your mouth. You have to first be talking successful if you're going to be successful. Your words are seeds. You know, the Bible says death and life are in the power of your tongue. It ain't in the You know, people would think, you know, he would say, you know, the death and life is because the devil is so mean and, and, and evil. No, it's not. It's the, the devil don't have the power over death and life. And then you would think, you know, they would say, well, God has the power of life and death in his hands. It don't even say that God has the power of life and death in his hands. He says death and life is in the power of your tongue. That means that most of us have set ourselves up for either success or failure, beginning with the words that we're speaking. And that's why you should never speak trash over your children. You're stupid. You can't be talking to your child like that. You always have to be uh, putting encouraging words on, you're gonna, you're gonna be anything you, anything you wanna be, you're gonna be it. That, that begins to set their life up for success. You know, young girl right now, i never forget it, you know, beautiful, beautiful young girl. And she says, um, you know, I'm ugly. I said, you're not ugly, you're beautiful, you know. No, I don't believe that. Well, why not, why don't you believe that? She said her, her, her crush told her she was ugly. And she received that, believed it, and now that's, that, that's what comes out of her mouth. She don't even think, she don't even think, I don't care how beautiful you tell her she is, she don't believe it. And that's how some people feel in life, you know. Some teacher told them they were stupid or told them that they would never succeed or never be anybody. And instead of canceling the assignment of that, they begin to live it out. So he says, so God says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. I don't care what things look like. The word of God should never stop coming out your mouth. You're nobody. You're a loser. You're never going to make it. I can do all things through Christ who daily infuses me with inner strength. You're a loser. I'm more than a conqueror through him that's loved me. You know, you have to, the word of God, he says, should never depart from your mouth. I don't care what someone else tells you. I don't care what you're feeling. Because your feelings are so crazy and fickle that you can never trust your feelings. You can have a thousand and one emotions in one day. You can never trust something that changes that often. But you know what never changes? God never changes. And because God never changes, his word never changes. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. Your situation changes, your circumstances change, your feelings change, but he never changes. And that's why the word of God has to keep coming out your mouth because the word never changed. I don't care what your situation looks like. 
The word of God never changes. So he says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Well, how, how, do, I, how do I make sure that the word of God is, will, will not depart out of my mouth? Well, very first of all, you got to read it. But you shall read and meditate on it day and night. You can't have something coming out of you if it ain't in you. Someone said, if, the, if it ain't in the pot, it can't be stirred. <laughs> if it ain't on the inside of you, it can't come out of you. The only way to get the word of God coming out you is if you're reading, you're studying, and you're meditating on it. And that means turning over in your mind, thinking about it, and then speaking it. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. So that you may be careful to do everything according with all that is written in it. So we see here that you have to study it, read it, meditate on it, speak it, and then do it. You have to apply the word to your life. You can't just be talking the word. You have to live the word. You have to begin to do what the Bible says to do. You know, somebody once said, the word of God will work if you work it. The reason why most people don't find success in the word is because they don't work it. And I'm talking about not working it for a day. Because <laughs> a lot of people want to work it for one day. It ain't working. Well, you, you got to work. You, got, you have to work it. Success is not overnight. And the word of God don't come to pass overnight. It's a process. So he says, the book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything, not just some things, not the stuff you feel like doing, and then not other things. Everything in according with all that is written in it. For then you will, you will make your way prosperous. God prosper me. He said, if you do what I tell you to do, you're going to make your own way prosperous. Then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will be successful, or you will have good success. If you study, read, meditate on the word of God every day, if you begin to speak it and apply it to your life on a consistent basis, eventually you'll come to a place called prosperity and success. Now, see, that's what the word of God says. I ain't, this ain't no corner store. Pre this is what the word, word of God says about success. And I put here, see, the word of God has to become more than just another ordinary book to you. It must become your delight, your great pleasure. Something that pleases you greatly. I put here, when the word of God begin, begin, begins to be your delight, you'll read it, you'll study it, and you'll meditate on it every day. When you understand that it is your, your book or your key book to being successful. It won't just be another book on your bookshelf. <laughs> it will be the source of godly wisdom and how you govern your life on a daily basis. And I put here, see, the word of God contains everything that you need to live a successful and prosperous life as a man or woman of God. It is the key that unlocks every closed door. It has the ability to remove every obstacle that's in your path. And if you begin to read it every day, study it every day, and meditate on it every day, it will completely change your life for the better. Now, I'm a personal witness to this. You know, God has completely changed my life because I have applied the word of God on a consistent basis for years. And people wonder, ah, uh -huh, you know, you're, how do you get where you got? I've got where I got by applying the word of God, studying, meditating, reading the word of God, and applying it, speaking it, not talking trash out my mouth, not cursing my future with my words. All right, let me give you one more thing, and then I'm going to give you my seven keys. You guys ready? Turn your Bibles to Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. I love this. I love this scripture. But it says there, Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. It says they're blessed or fortunate prosperous and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked 
or who does not follow the advice of those that are wicked. And it says, nor stand in a path of sinners, nor sits down to rest in the seat of the scornful. And it goes on to say, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, here it goes again. He meditates day and night. Right? So you saw that two times. Meditation on the word of God is key. Day and night. Not just when you feel like it. Not when you get in trouble and you're searching for a scripture. Every day. <laughs> so you know how most of you don't know what, some of you don't know what to do when things happen because you ain't meditating on the word see it has to be on the inside of you first and he says if he do these things he will be like a tree that is firmly planted by the streams of water which yield its fruit in its season and the bible says its leaf does not wither and whatever he or she does prospers, comes to maturity, and they're successful. The Bible says if you begin to meditate on the word day of night and you let that be your, your guide for living instead of taking wicked advice, he says that you're going to be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. You're going to bring forth fruit in its season. In other words, at the right time, you're going to reap. Now, I'm going to get into it, but I put if you, want every, if you want everything that you do to prosper. See, he says everything you do will prosper. If you want everything you do to prosper, to flourish, to grow and be successful, this scripture possesses that key. And I put here, you will never be empowered to prosper by God if you walk by ungodly counsel. If you begin to take on the way of sinners or, or, living, like a, or living like the devil... And you become a scornful person. Never. On the contrary, you have to become a student of the word of God. And the scriptures have to become your primary source for wisdom in daily living. If you begin to walk in the counsel of the word instead of the ungodly. And you begin to walk in the ways of God instead of sin the sinner's ways. And you begin to allow the word of God to make you better and not bitter or scorned. Then he will begin to clearly give you his wisdom, and you'll begin to have good success. Can you say amen? amen. All right. Now, if you don't, guys have not been taking down, you know, stuff now, this is your time to do it. Because I'm going to give you my seven keys right now. That was, just, that was my warm-up. That was my foundation. Now we're in it. You guys ready? I'm telling you, take some notes here. The number one thing that you got to do I want to live a successful 2021. Very first thing you got to do is you got to get rid of, rid of the dream killers in your life. Get rid of dream killers and dream stealers. In Genesis chapter 37, verses 3 through 11, it says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a distinctive multicolored tunic or a coat of many colors. And his brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than all of his brothers. So they hated him and could not find it within themselves to speak to him on friendly terms. And the Bible says, now Joseph dreamed a dream. Now here he is. He has a dream. How many of you got dreams? You know, dreams of a brighter future, goals, Right. And the Bible says he made the mistake of telling it to his brothers. And the Bible says, and because he told them their, their, his, their dreams, they hated him even more. <laughs> they already hated him because <laughs> his father showed them, showed them more affection and love than them. But now he's going to start dreaming. Tell them about how he's going to be successful one day. And the Bible says they hated him even more. Because he started telling them about their, his dreams. And he says, and he said to them, please listen to the details of this dream, which I have dreamed. We brothers were binding sheaves of grain and stalks in the field. And lo, my sheaf suddenly got up and stood upright and remained standing. And behold, your sheaves stood all around my sheaf and bowed down in respect. <laughs> and his brother said to him, are you actually going to reign over us? 
Are you really going to rule and govern us as your subjects? And the Bible says, so they hated him even more for telling them about his dreams and for his words. It says, but Joseph dreamed still another dream. And he told it to his brothers as well. He said, see here, I have again dreamed a dream. And lo, this time I saw 11 stars and the sun and the moon bowed down in respect to me. And he told it to his father as well as to his brothers. But his, father's re his father rebuked him and said to him in disbelief, what is the meaning of this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers actually come to bow down to the ground and respect before you? And the, and the Bible says Joseph's brothers were envious and jealous of him. But his father kept the words of Joseph in mind, wondering about their meaning. Now, skip down to verse 18. Now, his father sends him to check on his brothers. And the Bible says in verse 18, when they saw him from a distance, even before he came close to them, they plotted to kill him. Can you imagine that? His own brothers. They said to one another, look here. Look, here comes this dreamer. Now then, come and let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we will say to our father, a wild animal killed and devoured him. And we, we shall see what will become of his dreams. <laughs> we're going to see what's going to Once we kill him, we're going to see if we're going be to be bowing down before him. Now I'll put here, see, this is the major takeaway from all this. That is the fact that you should never share your intimate thoughts and dreams with people that are jealous and envious of you. There's no need to share them with them because they don't have your best interest at heart. And I put here, as I was thinking about it, your success and even your proposed success enrages them. They want to be you and they want to be where you are. Then you have the nerve to tell them that things are about to get better for you. <laughs> They're already envious. Now you're going to tell them, and things are about to get better. <laughs> Never forget this. People that are not successful usually can't handle and are not happy about your success. That's why it's dangerous to have friends that you're doing much better than. I always tell people that if you're going to be, if you're the smartest person in your bunch, it's time for you to get yourself a new bunch. <laughs> Surround yourself with people that are doing better than you, or at least just as good. <laughs> if your person is motivated to succeed, their success will push you closer to your goal. Their success will fuel you to do better, and you'll fuel them to do better. They also are people that will celebrate your success. Why? Because they're not jealous of it. <laughs> they're either doing as good as you or better than you, so there's no need for them to be jealous of your success. Some of us got wrong people just hanging around. And I'm, let me just, I'm, I'm just going to stick real to my notes right here. How do you know that your friends or even family members are dream killers? How do you know? How do you know? When you tell them about your goals and dreams, they'll try to discourage you from doing it. How are you going to do that? That's hard, you know. You, you, you got kids, you know. How are you going to do that? <laughs> when you tell them about your success, you can tell that they're not really excited for you. They don't have to say that they're not excited for you, for you to tell it. You can tell. It's written all, written all over your face. You ain't got to say a word. There needs to be a song like that. <laughs> you ain't got to say a word. It's written all over your face. You ain't happy. <laughs> Dream killers always think that you think you're better than them. And I put here, dream killers are crabs in a barrel. They like you. And even love you as long as you remain in the barrel. As soon as you try to climb out that barrel, they'll do everything they can to try to pull you back in it. 
And if you get out, they won't like you anymore. That's how dream killers are, man. As long as you see, misery loves company. So as long as you're doing just like, just as good as them, you know, just as bad as them, they're happy. As soon as you start talking about, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going back to school. I'm going to start this business. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this thing, you know. Then they try to discourage you, you know, try to tell you, you know, that that's going to be difficult, you know. You're not going to be able to do that, you know. They don't support you. You know, here you are, you start a business. They don't, they don't support you at all. They go spend more money somewhere else than support you. <laughs> it's crazy, man. But it's the truth. And it's exactly what happens. Best thing that you can do, get yourself a new bunch. You know, when you go to next levels, when you, when you aspire to go to the next level, people that are on this level, most of the times, will not have it in them to go to that next level with you. You'll want to take them with you. But if they don't want to do better, they're not going to be able to climb to higher levels with you. And the best thing that you can do is say, I love you, but I'm going. Amen. All right. I'm going I'm to keep on with this because I, I believe that I'm in a real vein right now. That's number one. Number two, you got to find people that are speaking the language of success. Remember I told you how important your words are. You have to find people that are talking the language of success. Now turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Remember I told you that this is, this is my Genesis. These are my Genesis lessons from 2021, man, that God been teaching me. Genesis 11, 1 through 9. It says, now the whole earth spoke one language and used the same words, right? And it's now everybody in the whole planet, this is right after, you know, the, the, right after the flood of Noah, right? The whole planet was speaking one language. Everybody, same language, whatever that language was. <laughs> and it says, and as people journeyed eastward, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they settled there. And it says, they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and fire them thoroughly to harden and strengthen them. So they use bricks for stone, and they use tar for mortar. And it says, then they said, come, let us build a city for ourselves, and a tower whose top will reach into the heavens, and let us make a famous name for ourselves so that we will not be scattered into separate groups and be dispersed over the face of the entire earth as the Lord instructed. Now, they're getting together united on a united front to do a demonic work. But I, I want to paint a picture here because the flip side is, is always, you know, what hap can, can happen also, right, if you're doing a godly work. So it says, now the Lord came down for himself. The God came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. He came down to see it for himself. That's how progressive these guys were. He came down to check it out for himself. And it says, and the Lord said, behold, they are one or they are a unified people, and they, will have this, and they all have the same language. And he says, this is only the beginning of what they will do in rebellion against me. And he says, and now no evil thing they imagine they can do will be impossible for them. And he says, come let us go down there and confuse and mix up their language so that they will not understand one another's speech. And it says now, so that's where different languages came. And it says, so the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the surface of the entire planet, and they stopped building the city. So everybody grouped up into to those that can speak the same language, and they went off and scattered themselves. Therefore, the name of the city was Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the entire earth. And from that place, the Lord scattered and dispersed them over the surface of the earth. Now, listen to this. What made these individuals successful was their ability to speak the same language and their desire to be a unified people. Now, I'm going to get to something here. The problem with those that want to be successful and those that want to stay mediocre is that they're not speaking the same language. The language of successful people and the language of people that want to be ordinary and mediocre, you're not speaking the same language. We may both be speaking English. 
but we're not speaking the same language. And I put it see, that's why it's important for you to surround yourself with other people that are either successful or they want to be successful. The successful person or those striving for success will always challenge you to do something greater than what you're already doing. See, that's the language of the successful. They'll always challenge you to do better. I don't care how good you're doing, you could do better. I got friends right now, they don't say, you got to do better, but they start telling me about what they're doing. I'm like, man, you know, I need to be taking this thing up a notch. See, I want to be around people that's doing that for me. You know, if you're around people, you know, let me tell you something. If you're around people all the time that you're doing better than them, you'll never ch be challenged to do better. You'll get comfortable. I'm like, well, I'm doing better than them, so. <laughs> It'll make you comfortable. If you start talking to somebody that's doing better than you, It'll start, it'll either make you envious or it will challenge you to do better. And I put here, the person that wants to be mediocre worker will always ask you why you're doing that or tell you what you're doing is too difficult or will ask you if you think you're, you're better than them. The problem is that your dreams are a challenge to their mediocrity. It challenges them, and so it upsets them. They don't want to do more because they're satisfied with being average. In other words, you're not speaking the same language. And I put, you can never build with someone that's speaking a different language, so don't waste your time. Find someone that you can understand and someone that can understand you. Success is the language that the mediocre will never learn because they want to stay mediocre. Only those that want success will be able to learn the language of success. Got to gather around yourself with people that are talking about doing something. I want to hear people talking about doing something. I'm going back to school. I'm starting a business. I'm doing this. You know, what you doing? Oh, I'm just kind of just, you know. You know, always talking to me, I don't want to hear about the pandemic all the time. I want to hear what you're doing in the pandemic. In the middle of the pandemic, I wrote two books. See, the, the jealous people will be like. <laughs> because I made up my mind that I was not going to waste this pandemic. I was going to do something and come out of it with something. I had more time on my hands, so, so I heard God say, finish, those, finish that book you was writing. And then I heard him do another book. Instead of watching the news and being scared to walk out the door, I said, I'm gonna do something about, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something with this time I got on my hands. I finished my website. I mean, I, I, mean, I, 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 did this, I got a list of things I did last year. 2020 was my, one of my best years ever. One of my best years ever, because I refused to let a pandemic stop me from moving forward. And I want to be around people that's like, come on, let, let's do some more, man. That was a good year, now let's take it up a notch. Let's, let's go to the next level. I got two more books in my belly this year, in Jesus' name. I'm going to write two more books this year, at least. Now, again, people that want to be successful will be challenged by what I just said. And they say, what can I do? Take it up a notch. <laughs> you know, and then mediocre people will be like, he think he's, he think he's something. <laughs> he think he's better than us. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I don't think I'm better than nobody. God has given us, he, is, he loves Everybody in this room, just as much he loves me, he'll love me no more than nobody else. So that's number two. Number three. If you can break away from the ordinary and the mediocre, God will give you the extraordinary. If you can break, if you can break out of it, if you can, if you can stop, some people, you know, you know, I can't say it no different. Some people are just, they're lazy. 
and they don't, they don't want to do nothing. Else. If it's uncomfortable, see, because success is uncomfortable. It will force you to do something that breaks your comfort. If you want to be, you, you will never be successful as all you want to do is be comfortable. Never. You'll never be successful if that's all you want. I just want to be comfortable. I just don't want to have no issues, no problems, you know. The, the only people that solve problems become successful. Every great business solves somebody's problem. And if you're a person that don't want to solve problems, you'll never be successful. I don't want no problems, you know. All right, let me move on. So, <laughs> Genesis chapter 12. <laughs> See, again, if you can break away from the ordinary and from being mediocre, then God will give you the extraordinary. Genesis 12, 12, verses 1 through 5, it says, Now in Haran, the Lord had said to Abram, Go away from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house. I want you to get away from those people. I need you to move away from them because I'm about to take you somewhere. And he says, to a land that I'm going to show you. And he says, if you will do that, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you abundantly. I will make your name great or I will make you famous. Do you know that Abraham is probably the most famous person in the Bible? You think about it. All of the three major religions consider him to be their father. The Jewish faith does, the Christian faith does, and the Islamic faith all attribute their fatherhood that say Abraham's our father. God said, I'm going to make you famous. And we still read about Abraham today. I'm going to make you famous, he said. And he says, and you shall be a blessing. Or in other words, you will be a source of good for others. I'm going ma to make you. A, I'm not just going to bless you. See, because God blesses you for a reason. I'm going to bless you, and you're going to be a blessing. And he says, and I will bless those that bless you. And I will curse those that curse you. And through you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. You're talking about a promise, man. The fivefold blessing of Abraham that we all now have access to. And it says there, once Abraham hears that, so Abraham departed in faithful obedience as the Lord had directed him. God says, if you want this, you got to get away from them. You got to be able to leave that place of comfort. I know that it's, it's see, it, that father's house, that was a place of safety for him. Place of comfort. You know, everything is good here. I got everything I need. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to try to do anything myself. I'm happy here. He says, if, I, if you want to get, if you want to go to the next level, if you want to go higher, you're going to have to get away from that. It says, so Abraham departed as the Lord had directed him in faithful obedience. And Lot, his nephew, went with him. And the Bible says Abraham was 20, or 70, 75 years old when he left Haran. And Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his nephew, and all their possessions, which they had acquired, and the people which they had acquired in Haran. And they set out to go to the land of Canaan. Now, I put, here, I put this here. Abraham's success hinged on his ability to leave the familiar and take a huge leap of faith in God. Again, his father's house was the place of familiarity, just like your family and friends are. You know? And I'm not telling people leave their family. What I'm saying is um, that goes back to the last thought, right? If there are people that are killing your dreams, you got to get away from them. The problem with Abraham's family was that they were living mediocre lives. They were not in connection with the vision of God. And God obviously saw something in Abraham that wasn't on the inside of his other family members. 
He saw greatness dwelling among mediocrity. All it took was a promise of success, and Abraham was ready to leave everything that he knew. That's all it took. You see, your desire to succeed has to be greater than your desire to be comfortable. Everybody loves to be comfortable. I love to be comfortable. <laughs> but your desire to succeed has to be greater than that. If it's not, then you'll, you'll choose comfortability every time. Success will always call you to go where no one else has gone. Some of you are the first people to graduate college in your, in your family or go to college, you know. Because success will always call you, to cause you, call you to go where no one else is. It will cause you to do what no one else is willing to do. But that would, that's what it takes to be successful in life. But if you trust God, he will get you to that destination called success. Can you say amen? amen. All right. So that's number three. You guys getting something out of this? Yeah. All right, now. All right. I'm moving. I'm plugging along. I got, you know, I got a few minutes here, so I'm going to keep on going. Number five, you can't drag someone, someone else into your future. Number four. I'm sorry. Number four. <laughs> They're like, don't, don't skip the numbers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Number four, you can't drag someone else into your future. Genesis 13, verses 1 through 9. See, look, what a study in Genesis, right? Amazing, right? It says there, so Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had. And the Bible says, and Lot, his nephew, went with him into the Najib, the south country of, Jude, of Judah. And it says, now Abram was extremely rich in livestock and in silver and in gold. And he journeyed on from the Najib as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, where he had first built an altar. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And it says there, but Lot, his nephew, right, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. You know? Now the lamb was not able to support them, that is, to sustain all the grazing and water needs while they lived together near one another. It said, for their possessions were too great for them to stay together. Now here is now, now just to paint this picture, Abraham is the one with the promises. He takes Lot, his nephew, with him, who's not a part of the promise. And because Abraham, a lot is with Abraham, he gets rich too. He starts getting blessed. He starts prospering off of his success. And it says, now it goes on to say, and there was strife and quarreling between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot cattle. Now here they, now, here they are together and, and a strife breaks out between the two of them. And it says, now the Canaanite and the Perizzite were living in the land at the same time making grazing of the livestock difficult. And it says, so Abram said to Lot, please, let there be no strife and no disagreement between you and me. He says, nor between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, because we're relatives. He says, is not the entire land before you? And he says, please separate yourself from me. If you take the left, I'll go to right. If you choose right, I'll go left. He said, just... Separate yourself from me. Finally, now, he's, he's getting rid of Lot, who he, who he brought along. He drug him along with him from his father's house. And here he, Lot begins to get successful because he's around Abraham. You know what happened to Lot the minute that Abraham tells him to leave? Not even, not even a short time later, he loses everything that he had. The Bible says he gets kidnapped by an invading country, and they took everything he had. And Abraham had to go and rescue him. So as you see, you try to drag people along with you, but when they don't have that mindset, see, they because they, if they stay connected to you and they don't bite the hand that fed them, they'll do all right. But see, Lot bit the hand that fed him. 
He didn't respect the fact that Abraham was the reason why he was getting blessed. And he began to cause strife and begin to cause problems in Abraham's life. And as a result, Abraham had to tell him, you got to go. The minute he leaves, he loses everything. And we find out who really had the blessing on their life. Now, if you, if you skip down to verse 14, this is what it says. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot left him, now lift up your eyes. All that time that Lot was with him, God is not speaking clearly to him. The moment that Lot leaves, God says, now lift up your eyes. Now I'm going to speak to you clearly. As long as you had him around you, I couldn't give you the promise I wanted to give you. Now that he's gone, now I can talk to you. Now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you're standing, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I will give it to you and your descendants forever. He says, I will make your descendants as numerous as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could count the grains of dust on the earth, then your descendants could also be counted. And he says, arise, make a thorough reconnaissance. Walk all throughout this land through the length and its width, for I will give it to you. And I'll put it here. See, there's a couple of lessons that we can learn from this. First of all, just because someone is close to you, family or friend, doesn't mean that they're in God's plan for you. As difficult as that may sound, Lot was never a part of the plan. Abraham was instructed to leave his father's house, but he took Lot, his nephew, with him. Now the question is, do you know whether or not, or how do you know whether or not someone is a part of God's plan? This is a key. Lot shows it to us. If they're not a part of God's plan, they will be a problem causer that was sent by the enemy to hinder your progress. You see, Lot started to cause strife. And I put it in, strife is the quickest way to lose the voice of God in your life. When strife is present, God won't be. You will only be able to hear God clearly again when the strife and the one that's causing it has been removed. And I put here, see, this is the most difficult thing, but the most necessary part. It's difficult because you obviously love those people. But if they're causing problems, they got to go. All right, you know, all right, I'm going to stay with it now. I'm not going to be worrying about your faces looking at me like this. Second thing that we see here is that, or we notice is that God doesn't speak to Abraham clearly about his destiny until Lot is separated from him. Think about this. Think about this. I want you to think about this. Who is hindering you from hearing clearly or from hearing God clearly in your life? Do you have somebody that's doing that? You got to think about that. Who's robbing you of your destiny and your blessings because you refuse to let them go? even though you know you should. Who is that person? Or who are those people? See, if when I said that, you thought of somebody, that's the person that you need to make a clean break from. See, if you, if you, if you got to start thinking about, hmm, see, then, then I'm not talking about you. <laughs> you got to try to figure, let me say, do I have somebody like that? <laughs> but as soon as I said that, you thought of a person. I don't care how much you love them. That's the person you got to make that break from. I'm not talking about being mean and nasty to them. I'm talking about, you know, the love from a distance. I'm going to be praying for you. <laughs> They're hindering you from succeeding in life. And they will continue to hinder you if you don't tell them to go. If you don't want no more hindrance, you got to tell Lot to hit the road. If you, like Abraham said, let there be no strife between us, man. Look, look, if you go that way, if you go to the left, I'll go to the right. You know, you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Just let this, 
Just go. I don't care which way you go. Just go. And the minute that Lot's gone, God says, now lift up your eyes. Now. Now I can talk to you. Now that you got rid of all of that, I can talk to you. Now I can talk to you about your destiny. Now I can give you the promise that I have for you. So you get rid of that, I can't. No matter how much I want to give it to you, I can't. All right, let me. I only got a little while longer to go. You guys hanging in there? I'm on number five now, right? Okay, number five. (laughs) Number five, once you set out on this road to success, once you make these clean breaks and you've made up your mind, I'm gonna be successful. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going on. I'm gonna be successful. I don't care how difficult it looks, or no how no matter how difficult it gets, no turning back. No turning back. In Genesis chapter 24, verses 1 through 9, it says there, I, I, this is so good. It says, Now Abraham was old. Well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. I love that. How many of you, when you get old and you're advanced in years, you can say, you want to be able to say, the Lord has blessed me in all things. My God, he said, the Lord had blessed him in all things. And it says, and Abraham said to his servant Eleazar of Damascus, the oldest of his household, who had charge over all that Abraham owned. He says, please put your hand under my thigh as is customary for affirming a solemn oath. This is how they, this is how he made, he swore to him that he was going to do what Abraham asked him. He says, I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not take a wife from my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I live, but you will instead go to my former country and to my relatives and take a wife from my son Isaac. And it says, the servant said to him, suppose the woman will not be willing to follow me back to this country. Should I take your son back to the country from which you came? He said, Abraham said, see to it that you do not take my son back there. And it's emphatic. See to it that you do not take my son back there. And he says, the Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house, from the land of my family and my birth, who spoke to me and swore to me, saying to your descendants, I will give this land. He will send his angel before you to guide you. And you will take a wife from there for my son and bring him here and bring her here. rather. And if the woman is not willing to follow you to this land, then you will be free from this oath and be blameless. Only you must never take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under his thigh and swore to him concerning this matter. I just want to say one thing from this exchange that Abraham has with his servant. That is this. Never go back to the place God delivered you from. Abraham tells his servant, see to it that you do not take my son back there. I don't care what happens. Don't go back. And again, this was an emphatic statement. He wanted to make sure that his servant understood that Isaac was to never go back there. That place was the place that God told him to leave in the first place in the search of a better one. Abraham was delivered from that place and from his family members and those that were not connected to the promise. And I put here, connecting with your past is dangerous. And he has the ability to pull you back into what you used to do. Again, it's familiar. It's enticing. It's alluring. And if you're not careful, you'll find yourself going back and living that old life. Now, I put here, make a little joke. It's the crack house that Pookie should have never went back to. (laughs) Never go back and never look back. It wasn't better for you there. That's why you left in the first place. Never go back there. I don't care how difficult it gets out there. It's better than back there. Keep moving forward. Eventually, you will hit that place called success. Can you say amen? amen. Number six. I got to move, man. I got clothes. In the, give, me, give me 15 minutes. I'm going to close. 
That's my number five. Number six, nobody ever said that success would be easy. And I don't want everybody, anybody to ever think that. It's probably the hardest thing you'll ever do. <laughs> but if you stick with it, you will become successful. But it's going to take some hard work. Now, Genesis 26, verses 19 through 21. It says there, now, I think I'm a, uh, this blessed me so much, man. Uh, all right, let me just get with it. I can't. Let me, let me stay focused. It says, but when Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there a well of flowing water, the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, the water's ours. So Isaac named the well Esek, which means quarreling, because they quarreled with him for it. Then his servants dug another well, and they quarreled over that also. So Isaac named it Sitna, which means enmity or an enemy. Now, listen to this. Again, nobody ever said that success would be an easy road. Success comes with many, many challenges and a great deal of opposition. Make no mistake, starting your own thing is not easy. <laughs> If it was, everybody would do it. Everybody would be successful if success was easy, but it's not. It takes many years of hard work. It takes the ability to not quit when things don't work your way. In Isaac's case, after the extremely hard work and the great deal of effort it took to dig and find water, the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with him about it. And they said, the water's ours. And they took it away from him. He then gives up a successful well to men that didn't put the first shovel in the ground. And he moves on. And I put here, have you ever had something taken away from you that you worked hard for? See, that's enough tragedy right there for anybody to want to quit and give up. Just that. You work hard for something, it starts to work, and then someone takes it from you. But Isaac tries again. He digs another well. And after a while, he finds more water. But the same thing happens to him again. They take the credit for all of his hard work. Has anybody ever took the credit for your hard work? Yeah, as you come up with something on your job, people then somebody else take the credit for it. But Isaac doesn't fight, and more importantly, he doesn't quit. He just digs another well. And I put here, see, one thing that you have to understand is that the enemy will fight you tooth and toenail to stop you from succeeding. But if you keep fighting, and you keep pushing, and you keep pushing, and keep digging, you're going to hit success. And that's my last one right here. You guys ready? Because I'm about to close. Number seven. With that being said, you got to keep digging. That's the most difficult thing to do. To keep at something when you're when you're you get knocked down, you know, you get you get treated unfairly. This doesn't work the way you wanted it to work. To keep pressing on is the most difficult thing you can do. But if you keep doing it, you're going to find a place. Now, Genesis chapter 26, verses 22 to 25. The Bible says, and I like this. This is probably one of the most important parts of this scripture. He says he moved away from there. <laughs> or he got away from the negativity and the people that were causing that strife. And the Bible says, and he dug another well. And the Bible says, and they did not quarrel over that one. So he named it Rehoboth. That name means broad places. Beautiful. He named it that because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us. And we shall be prosperous or we will be fruitful in the land. And it goes on to say, then he went up from there to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, your father. Do not be afraid for I'm with you. I will bless and favor you and multiply your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. And it says, so Isaac built an altar and called on the name of the Lord in prayer. 
And he pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants dug another well. Now skip down to verse 32, and I'm going to get ready to wrap this up. It says there, now on the same day, Isaac's servant came and told him about the well they dug, saying, we have found water. So he named the well Sheba, which means well of abundance. Therefore, the name of the city is called Beersheba to this day. Now, let me wrap this all up. I'm going to get ready to close. See, this time he finds real success. He digs a well, and nobody bothers him over it. In this instant, we learn several lessons. First, you have to move away from the negativity of negative people. See, the first two wells that Isaac dug were in the same general area. Right? He's digging. He finds a well, and then they fight with him over it. And he starts digging another well in the same area, and they, they take that away from him too. And the Bible says he moved away from there. And dug another well. We talked about this earlier, but one of the keys to success is to get away from dream killers and dream stealers. Every time Isaac did something that worked, the dream stealers took it away from him. So Isaac moved away from the dream stealers and he dug another well. He dug somewhere away from those people. And oftentimes, that's what you got to do. You have to, if you're not finding favor in a particular area, you got to go to a place where you find favor. Now, the second lesson we learn from this story is that success is not easy. <laughs> if you want it, you're going to have to fight for it and earn it. Things are not always going to go your way. They're not always going to work according to plan. And you can't give up because it doesn't. That is if you want to be successful. Nobody that quits will become successful. If you're a quitter, you'll never become successful. Quitters will never win. Never. You, got a ne you have to have a never say die attitude. I'm, be I'm, a, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to keep pushing until something works. I'm going to keep digging until I find the well. I don't care how long I got to dig, I'm going to dig until I find it. You know what? You only got to be right once. You know how many people have tried something and failed 100 times? You only got to be right once. Thirdly, we learn that you have to keep digging and keep searching until you find the place that God has for you. Apparently, for whatever reason, although Isaac found wells that worked, they weren't positioned in the place of God's blessing and favor for him. When he found that place, he named it Rehoboth, or broad places, saying, for now the Lord has made room for us. See, there's a place where God is going to make room for you. Broad places. And he says, as a result of that, we shall be prosperous or fruitful in the land. And I put here, what you're looking for is the place where God wants you to be. That place is a broad place. It ain't no little place. God has a broad place for you, a place where you can stretch out. I don't like being in tight spaces. I like being in broad places. I want to stretch out. I need a big bed. I want to stretch out. He said, I got a broad place for you. The place is a broad place. It's a place where God has made room for you to grow, prosper, and to be successful. The goal for you is to find that place. And that's why prayer is so important. Prayer will lead you to the place. Prayer provides direction. You know, the Bible says that the steps of a good man, they are ordered of the Lord. Right? In all your ways, the Bible says, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Or in all your ways, put God first and he'll direct your paths. Where is he leading you? He's leading you to the place. The good news is that after you find Rehoboth, or broad places, if you keep digging, you'll find Sheba, <laughs> or the well of abundance, or that place of abundance, that place of more than enough, where there is no lack. That's where God ultimately is trying to lead you, to that place where there is more than enough, a broad place 
where there is blessings and favor for you found there. And I put here, God is positioning many of you today for abundance. But again, if you want to be successful, there's some things you got to do. See, God don't, he just don't do it for you. If it was all about God just doing it for us, we, everybody in this room would be successful. But I got news for you. He said to write the book, but I didn't wake up and just see a hand writing the book for me. It don't just, things just don't happen. You got to be able to be willing to put your hands to the plow. You got to be willing to dig. See, because if you do everything that you can do, then God will do what you can't do. That's how God gets involved in your life. He don't do for you what you, what you can do for yourself. He, he does for you what you can't do. He gives you favor. He turns people's hearts towards you, right? You can't make people like you. But God can turn, the Bible says the heart of kings is in his hand. He can turn it whatever he, he wills. But you can position yourself. You can prepare yourself. You can make yourself ready so that when you, when you get into those people's, uh, uh, um, you get around those individuals that God gives you favor with, you'll be able to do the right things and say the right things and be prepared to do what you need to do. This is the gospel that's not popular. Because people want the gospel that says, he's going to bless you. He's just going to give it to you. You know, that's the gospel that people want to hear. You don't have to do anything. Just sit there. God's going to bless you. That's the gospel people want to hear. But it's not a true gospel. <laughs> the gospel or the good news to a poor person is that you don't have to be poor. Right? To a sick person, you don't have to be sick. You know, that's the gospel, right? But you got to do something. You don't just sit there and it happens. Again, you start putting these things into practice. Starting this month, start getting your life in order, start doing certain things to prepare yourself for a successful year. Start moving, de-weeding your life. Getting rid of people that are hindrances. I put together my list of people that inspire and encourage me. I'm going to say, I'm going to start spending more time with them because I need to be more encouraged this year. I want to go further than I went last year. And if I and if I can't, I got to get people around me that encourage me so that it pushes me to do better. I talk with my friend, man. He said, "Yeah, man, I just bought a house in I just bought a house in Georgia, man. I'm starting my, you know, he got a house here. I'm buying a house in Georgia because I start this business over there. I'm gonna be flying back and forth, you know." I said, "Okay." <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> He said, yes, my summer house, man. My wife don't like the cold. I said, I know that's right. I said, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I want nobody talking about, yeah, I'm living in this ghetto shack, and I don't, I don't want to talk to nobody talking about that. I want to talk to somebody that's talking about buying property. Yeah, I'm struggling. I could barely make it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I want, like, look, man, let me just, let me pray for you. <laughs> let me pray for you. <laughs> When I get off the phone, man, I got to, like, I got to wash my brain, man. Like, <laughs> call my friend. What you doing, man? I'm about to start this business. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, talk to me, man. Tell me what you're doing. I don't be around people like that. I start writing my list. These are my people. I'm going to try to have lunch with them. Like, maybe, you know, at least once a month. Tell me about what you're doing, man. I ain't got to talk about what I'm doing. Tell me about what you're doing. When I get off, I want to be inspired, like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm slacking. <laughs> I get on the phone with some people sometimes, be like, man, I'm a slacker, man. I need, to, <laughs> I, need to, I need to take it to the next level, man. I'm slacking. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not doing all I can do, you know? But that's how you, that's how you grow into it, right? You, you hear, you speak it, you start living it. You know, every day you got a plan for your life. I got a to-do list every day. Every, every day I got something. I, I, I got my day is planned. I'm just going to take life as, it, as it's thrown at me. No, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, got, I got a plan. I'm going to do this. This is what I'm going to do today. 
I need to accomplish these things today. Because success is about making progress. Success is about making progress in life. That's what it's about. If you can make progress every day. See, mo see some people, they don't feel accomplished because they don't never make progress. Again, it's not about, well, if I'm not there, I'm not successful. No, if you're making progress towards it, you're successful. All right, I'm done, man. I'm done. Lift your hands to Jesus, man. We're going to get ready to close right here. We're, I'm done. I'm going to finish right here. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just praise you. We bless you. We thank you for your word. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that people, that they got something out of this today. I'm praying that all the precious people that are here today, all the people that are watching, listening on Facebook, that are going to be watching and listening on YouTube, I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that they heard it, but more importantly, that they will do something with it. That it won't just be a word that was spoken to their ear and that goes out the other. I'm praying that people will begin to apply this to their lives so that they can have the most successful year that they have ever had. I'm praying for our people to prosper, to flourish, to grow, to be successful. I'm praying that everything that they do and everything that they put their hands to will be successful. But in order for that to happen, you said that we have to, we have to do some things. And I pray that all of us will do the thing that you have directed us to do so that we can be successful. And Father Fort, we thank you. We bless you. We give you all the praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Now come on, let's just give Jesus a praise in this place. Amen. 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 All right. We're going to get ready to close here. What we're going to do, we're going to worship God here. We're going to worship him with tithes, with offerings, special giving. And we'll get ready to close. You know, the Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance. The first flutes of all of your increase. He says, if you do that, your barns will be filled with plenty. Your presses, they'll burst out with new wine. Let me tell you something. You know, you, you, one of the things that the Bible talks about in terms of being prosperous, the very first thing you have to do is honor God. <laughs> Y'all learn how to honor God. You know, I've been honoring God for 20 years with my tithes and my offerings. But then the second thing is to learn how to manage your finances. Those things married together, you'll never, you'll never have lack. If you know how to honor God and you know how to manage your finances, you'll never have lack. You'll always have more than enough. Because God will bless what you have, and then you'll be able to manage what he gives you. If you can't manage your money, I don't care how much money's thrown at you, you it'll be gone. And that's why Lot left, lost everything. <laughs> you don't know how to man. You know, you got basketball players make millions of dollars. The great majority, the vast majority of them go broke. Because they don't know how to manage the money that they made. You know, so that's the key. People hit the lottery, go broke. How can you get, win $100 million and be broke? Money management. And the bottom line is, you know, until you really learn how to manage your money properly, God will never give you more because God is a, a good investor. And he says, he that is faithful in that which is least will be faithful in much. And he that is unjust in least will also be unjust in much. That's why God always starts you out with a little. Prove yourself faithful over that, he'll give you more. Prove yourself faithful over that, he'll give you more. All right, so let's go ahead and worship God with tithes and with offerings. Tithes and offerings, they go in this envelope. You're going to write a check. You write it to the love of Jesus. You can give on your debit card. You can use our cash app. We have cash, uh, cash app is cash sign, L-O-J-N-N. -N. You can also use our GiveLify app. You can download it on your phone or your, your iPhone or your Android device. And it's under love of Jesus of North Newark. You can give that way as well. All right, so let's go ahead and worship God. Amen, amen, amen. Now let me mention this to you while you're giving.
this Thursday we have service, 5 p.m. Every Thursday we have Bible study. You guys are more than welcome to come. We are open, and we're also live on Facebook. So if you can't make it in person, you can always view live on Facebook. And also everything that we do will be on YouTube as well, and you can check it out there. All right? Amen, amen, amen. Well, to God be the glory. I challenge you to, you know, invite people to service. Thank you. You forget mother over there. <laughs> All right. Amen, amen, amen. All right, stretch forth your hands. We're going to bless this offering. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for everybody that gave to this offering today. Father, bless your people. Open up for them the windows of heaven. Pour them out blessings that they don't have room enough to receive. I pray that you will prosper your people this year. Grant us the grace and give us wisdom and give us direction so that we can do everything that we need to do so that we can experience the most successful year that we've ever experienced. I don't care what's going on. You can prosper people even in the middle of a pandemic. And Father, for we just thank you and we bless you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. All right, we're going to get ready to close. I want anybody to stand up on your feet. Let me bless you. Thank you for hanging in there with me, for giving me a few extra moments. I try to get you guys out of here by 1230, but I got happy today. <laughs> and I pray that you got something out of the message today. But let me bless you. May the Lord bless you, keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious and merciful and kind to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, grant you his holy peace. In Jesus' matchless name, I want anybody to say, I'm blessed. And I can't be cursed in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. I love you. Have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. I will see you Thursday. God bless you.